Okay, so we're recording as of now. Good afternoon or good evening or good morning, wherever you happen to be in this bright world of ours. David Belfer here in Melbourne on the 1st of March, 2021. I don't believe it's the 1st of March yet where Robert is sitting in New York City. He's still got a couple of hours left of the last day of February. Now, if you have a friend that was born on the 29th of February, what day do they celebrate their birthday? In February or in March? Is that is that rhetorical? It is a rhetorical question. It's a very, very, you know, or else they only have one birthday every four years. So they are getting, actually, they're getting younger as we get older. They are getting younger as we get older. That is one way of looking at it. So Jesse has a friend whose birthday, well, she's not celebrating it, but she's going to be five at her next birthday. <laughs> and he's 22, so you, you can work that out. Oh, no, she's going to be six. So, um, yeah, how are you today, my friend? It's nice to see you. Good. Do you know that this thing says January 3rd, 2021? No, it actually says the 1st of March, because in Australia, we do the date and then the month. I see. So Whereas in funny. America, they're backward and they do it the month <laughs> and then the day. See, now I see that as backward. But it's so funny how, how, some, how cultures view their reality as the only reality. No. And yet, and yet, and, and yet. yet, and yet. And yet. Um, I mean, based on your habits, you see that as March 1st, 2021. And in the U.S., if you're dyslexic, if you're dyslexic, you would see that as March 1st, 2021. That's right. But if you're not dyslexic, you would see this January 3rd, 2021. I'm glad that we're bringing joy into your evening <laughs> over the simplest of things, you know. So we should look at those simple things. What things have you celebrated in the last three days that make you go? Have you had any? Uh, I have. I have. Um, you don't have to share them if you don't want to. I did throw you into that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, actually, one of the things that we had done is we had this absolutely spectacular vegetarian Filipino meal that, you do that a lot. What was that? You do that a lot. Did I talk about the last time? You, you, you talk about it every week that we had <laughs> a really great Filipino vegetarian meal. Now, in some cultures, that would be like looking at the 1st of March or the 3rd of January. <laughs> Very funny. Tell me Very about funny. This meal that you had last night or the night before. Actually, I want to talk about my lunch. <laughs> I had, I had, I had, you know, it's funny. So, so Marissa and I took a walk at the state park today and it's still freezing it's it is cold but not as cold it was i mean it was um hailing actually today so <laughs> so you get a sense it was kind of cold right we were and we were walking in this state park and after walking we decided to go to uh my favorite italian restaurant and i had this absolutely breathtaking baked menegot it was breathtaking it was the sauce was was balanced with the menegot with which was the mozzarella cheese was fresh they had these delicious garlic knots and um but because of of covid we actually don't eat in restaurants we don't feel comfortable eating in restaurants generally speaking and mm -hmm. so what we've what we've grown to do is just eat in the car so we, we take a meal out and then we actually find a way to eat it in the car. And Marissa organizes it and, you know, arranges it. And I'm sitting there with this with this plate of food in my in my lap in the car because it feels like it's the safest place to eat a meal during COVID if you're wow. not in your house. Wow. I mean, and it just is. It just is, honestly. Um, because, you know, with COVID, 
there's so much um, still unknown about it, I feel. And I mean, we still don't know for sure. I don't think they know for sure <clears throat> if if you have to, if you can contract it through your eyes, through it, you know, if, if there are uh, these, these um, the virus in the air can, I mean, the eyes are an open uh, area in the body. And uh, so if you have your mask on, but your eyes are still exposed, exposed. Mm -hmm. and they were saying people who wear glasses actually uh, contract it three times less than people who don't wear glasses, which tells me that the glasses might provide some protection. Well, that's logically thinking. I like the way you think, but you've had the Pfizer jab, have you not? Maybe, maybe so. Yeah, I have had the Pfizer jab. Okay, yeah. well, they say that that is 95% mm. okay, as compared to one of the other ones, which is only 60% okay. So right. having had the better of the two, do you feel better about that? I will say this to you. Yes. 50% of me feels better about it. The other 50% doesn't. Now, <laughs> why I say that, why you I haven't say had the that, second jab yet. Why I say that, I have had the second jab, but oh. my wife has had none. None. Yes. And so my concern is mostly about her health, not my health. Oh. Well, if you stay healthy and you're eating in the car all the time, she's not going to get nothing. <laughs> <laughs> really funny, Robert. It's not funny, but it's funny. There, there's there is humor in that. Um, so tell me about you. How about you? Any any uh, uh, victories? Uh, things you've eaten that you've enjoyed? Uh, life? I always eat things that I enjoy. Um, but last last week for me was actually a a, a, a tough week. I told you the week before that I was trying to get myself up to visit my friend who was passing away. Mm. He unfortunately did pass away on Thursday. So oh, sorry. Very sorry. Sending blessings to Mark on his journey heading out. Um, yeah, that, that, that's pretty, that was pretty sad. So that on um, Wednesday, I had a, a hearing in a mediation session about a, a matter that I'm dealing with. And so conflict is interesting at the moment. This has been ongoing for a number of years and it sort of came to a head, but it still isn't resolved. So we have another stab at it in two weeks time on the Monday. So we'll be going in and dealing with that. That will be resolved. I, I'm sure about that. It's just been a real pain in the ass for the last couple of years and um, not being able to get to, pardon me, get to resolution prior to now has been very frustrating in the sense of that it's it's legal and it's gone lawyery and uh, the lawyers of the opposition side have got this bull terrier kind of yapping thing, which is, unnecessary when you can just sit down and chat and that was what i'd offered so long ago and it just was rejected by the uh owner because he thought no we're not going to do that and it's cost us both thousands of dollars thousands of dollars and so unnecessary such unnecessary cost it could have gone to them anyway but gone to them and not gone to lawyers. So that's frustrating. Um, but I'm learning in that process. So there's got to be a win in there somewhere and that might be the learning. I'm not sure what it will be. And I did learn about stress last week though, because of stress of my friend and stress of that. And then on Friday, Great Spirit gave me a gift. What's that? Great Spirit gave me the gift of vertigo and i had a for the second time in my life i don't do you remember we spoke about it about three months ago mm -hmm. Vaguely, yeah yeah anyway i had another uh, uh not i won't call it an attack i had a, an episode of, of vertigo whilst i was at the salon and 
it made me realize that there's many things that can create uh, an upheaval or an unease. I don't use the word disease because it's not it's not where I come from, but unease in my body. And I could hear a couple of days earlier that my ears were, were vertigo is when you have an imbalance in the crystals in your ears or something like that. And um, I could hear things getting louder in my head and I thought people were actually being loud. And so I would say to my staff members, Shh, bring it down a bit. And they're going, what are you talking about? And I go, it's loud. I said, it's really loud in my head. And so I knew something was going on when they said, what are you talking about? But I wasn't sure what it was or when it was going to be. So, um, you know, my win is is awareness of knowing what's coming and, and understanding what's going on in my body and uh, taking heed of that and looking at the things to undertake or to do. So I spent a lot of yesterday meditating. I spent this morning starting off my day meditating. I'm just coming back to self, coming back here to be able to push away what I don't need to have. And um, I hadn't been doing that for about a week. I was putting myself under under. I'll say immense pressure. Now, immense pressure is a great thing because if you think of perturbation, Bucky Fuller's, you know, the law of thermodynamics. And so if you're going to be working on perturbation, things actually, energy reverberates and, 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 it, and it starts to vibrate and it gets faster and faster and faster until it actually goes and it explodes. Now, when something explodes, be it in nature or be it in, your head or be it in your body or in your heart or anything like that, it's irreversible. You can't go back to the equilibrium because something has shifted. You know, mm -hmm. the tectonic plates have, have moved. It's never the same. That's growth. And, um, Beautiful. and that is where I feel that I'm at. You know, I feel that I've grown after last week a lot. And, um, Good for you, David. Good for you. So that was that was the win. All out of out of adversity. Unfortunately, wins often come if they're seen as that. Or you can go the other way and go, ah, fuck it, I'll go, <laughs> whatever it will be. You can do that in there as well. But then take the win and go, okay. There's change there, which is a which is a blessing. That's why I'm looking at it. Well, I think that's a that's a a very powerful way to uh, to deal with with uh, adversity and conflict is to be able to see the positive side of it. Hmm. Um, you love conflict. Psychologically, we would call that reframing. Reframing. Yeah, where you take something that is negative or conflict or something that you're dealing with or challenge and then find the positive in it by asking yourself, what did I learn from this? And it sounds mm -hmm. like that's exactly what you did. Yeah, so kudos to I, you. I, 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 I pull it down to debriefing, I suppose. You know, it's like, okay, what worked? Very, very simple lessons, you know, what worked, what didn't work, what can I do better next time? Mm -hmm. or differently it doesn't have to be better what would i do differently next time and um it's actually a, a really another good formula for reframing sounds yeah. to me yeah um so i uh, <clears throat> i've always been fascinated by dreams and i'm just switching topics okay if we switch topics sure wait is it all right that we switch topics <laughs> yes that's fine i just had to call upstairs to find out if it was okay <laughs> <laughs> that's funny um wait hold on it was... you said it was okay okay i'll let him know she says it's okay who is she oh, no, no 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 we've already changed topics it's your turn come on <laughs> <laughs> all right 
Anyway, so I've always been fascinated by dreams. And uh, there was a time in my life where I would write down all my dreams and then uh, examine the symbology of them. Mm -hmm. And what I found is, you know, patterns of messaging and um, sometimes precognitive dreams, sometimes lucid dreams. And, uh, but I haven't been spending as much time these days as, as I had in the past. But recently I had a dream. Um, I had been working, uh, doing some, um, I spent about 25 years working with a subtle energy uh, um, program called Sukhya Marikari. It's the art of offering divine light. But I stopped going this year, uh, mostly because it involved pe- going to a dojo um, where you would give people light. And this, um, it just was too close a, a space for me to want to do it comfortably because of COVID. And two nights ago, I had this dream um, where this dear friend of mine from this dojo uh, said to me, um, basically, I don't have a dojo anymore. I don't, I don't really go anymore. I don't belong anymore. And I felt so sad by this friend of mine in my dream uh, sharing this with me that I immediately called a, a, a contact of mine at the dojo and said, listen, I really, I had my vaccination. I'd like to come back. And then I shared with her the dream that I had that influenced me to do that. And she said, yeah, it sounds like it was a real message for you. Mm-hmm. And so, and so um, I really um, am a great believer in multidimensionality in working with alternate realities like the dream state for example and and but this particular dream it really kind of brought back for me the wealth of information that's possible for us uh accessing it through other means than the five senses and i was wondering what your thoughts were about that oh i'm a great believer of uh of I'm going to call it intuition more so than dream state. You know, if my body is talking to me and I was woken up this morning by something, I'm not sure what it was. Um, And I'm not one that actually remembers my dreams. And I know that you and I have spoken about it and you've done as much work as you have done on that with lucid dreaming and things like that. Dreams are just things that sometimes I remember. If I wake up within it, I will remember. If I don't, then it's not something that that uh, I, I dwell on. However, I do know that when I wake up and I have a feeling, it was that it is generally from within a dream. And um, that is often what I might meditate on the feeling, so not necessarily needing to know what it was. And, yeah, it's it's a a great learning time. So coming back to the concept of intuition and understanding that, I will often find myself in discussions with whether it be an individual within our salon space or in a social sense where there is, you know, what, what you mentioned there about, your dream where the friend didn't belong. That's something that actually came up in discussion on Saturday night with some friends and about a partnership and where one has her tribe and her partner doesn't, hasn't found it. And we were discussing literally that, you know, how how does one feel when they're in that state? You know, you're comfortable, but is there discomfort in the other? And what are they doing for that? Have they got space to be able to explore, et cetera? And it was, it was a very, very interesting discussion that, that you know, was, was, was had after that. Um, however, something that I also do is that when that sort of thing is asked of or not, asked, I'll always ask permission because my intuitive state can sometimes be so spot on that it, it can hurt. And that's something that I've learned to have fear of sometimes. 
So dream state, I think it, it maybe does come from dream state or is it just being connected to having our antennae out, being Martians and being uh, receiving messages? I think that's, for me, that's what it is. So dreams are messages. We discussed ayahuasca. Have you ever done that? The name Bailey sounds familiar. Uh, refresh my memory. Well, ayahuasca is a is a, a hallucinogen that 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 is used in many of the uh, tribal nations to take them into dream state or into. Uh, another state and, and ayahuasca i think it's in mexico there's a lot of or from some of the indian tribes um throughout the states throughout south america more in south america i believe and it's something that you know can take somebody to a near-death experience and people have died in if it's not done under a very very What's the word for it? Supervised space. You know, that was just something that came up in, in the discussion as well. So it's hallucinogens. I, I don't do drugs. That's not, I, I took these little things which uh, make you not feel dizzy <laughs> after Friday. Um, it was meant to give blood today and I rang them. I said, I've had these drugs, which are the non-dizzy drugs. Should I not come? They said, yes, don't come. <laughs> Thank you. You don't want to give somebody your plasma and have them getting dizzy. Well, not, not that that would happen. So two things you might want to look at. I mean, one is um, one is uh, stress in relationship to vertigo. Mm. And the other is how often you give blood in relationship to vertigo. And that's coming from my intuition. Yeah, so. thank you. Uh, so we don't David, get like paid for blood here in Australia. All right, so, so more reason, more reason to look look at it. Um, more so reason to look at it in America. <laughs> they give you blood, and people go and give seven of their nine liters. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny. Uh, so, David, I did want to keep this at thirty minutes. I have a, a big uh, early morning tomorrow. Okay. So I appreciate um, our discussion. It's been interesting. From always from where we were going to always having gone somewhere on a journey robert i appreciate your time again and always uh, same here david and uh, to you and marissa and to your filipino eateries <laughs> may they continue to feed you with joyous food that just makes your heart sing your Thank stomach you. go raw and good luck with uh, the challenges uh, that you're having and and uh you know, sending prayers and 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 uh, goodwill towards uh, towards a, a a positive resolution. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that very much. All right. On that Thank note, you. I'm taking my dog for a groom. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Keep my love too, Bridget. All Love right. you. Bye, -bye now. Thanks. Bye. Love you too. Bye now.